What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, August 15th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, from the Energy News Beat Substack, when will the world hit peak oil? Elon Musk's Grok 2.0 is becoming a useful tool and funny as well. So <laughs> Stu asked a, a bunch of questions about peak oil, and we'll roll through that. Next up, breakthrough drilling technology could unlock 5 billion barrels of oil. Next up, Chenier expects Asian LNG demand to nearly double by 2040. Next up, European gas price hike boosts Russian fuel sales, outstripping the total EU aid to Ukraine. Finally, sticking abroad, UK's biggest undersea power link gets the green light. Stua then tossed through to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Mainly, we saw a, a nice quote unquote minor CPI inflation print. So, we'll cover what that means for any potential rate cuts. We'll also chat a little bit about the IEA's crude oil inventory. It's super surprising build. We'll kind of dive into the numbers here and there. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start out with our buddy over there, Elon Musk over on X. I had a little bit of fun at his expense today. And Michael, I first wanted to start out. They got, hey, we got a new generation of rock out here. So I went, great. Can you generate, the first question I asked it, can you generate a offshore oil rig? Beautiful picture. I mean, it did. It was beautiful. I'm like, man, that's great. How about a Texas oil rig? You see a horse, you see a cowboy. It is beautiful. I'm like, we're on a roll. So I go down and I ask Grog this. Okay, when will the world hit peak oil? Michael, it goes like, so you're asking about peak oil is the response. <laughs> Classic theory says pre Peak oil will be in the mid 20th century, suggesting it would occur around 0000. So I'm not sure what that was. But with technology advancements like fracking, deep sea drilling, and unconventional sources, the peak has been pushed further into the future. Some argue peak have peak conventional oil, but overall liquid and hydrocarbons might not peak for a while. This was brilliant. And then when you consider our next story coming around the thing, I'm like, this is really not bad. I, I was pretty impressed with this. Peak might be more about economics, environmental policy, and technological breakthroughs than physical limits of oil in the ground. What a great answer for this. Yeah, it, to be honest, it, it, it came up with an answer that, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I, I think this answer is fairly good. It's going to continue. Peak oil will continue to be pushed further and further into the future as we, you know, continue to advance yep. technology, as we continue to, you know, as, as prices continue to go high, assuming they continue to go high, more and more oil becomes unlocked. Because remember, peak oil has more to do with, is it economically feasible to exactly. produce the oil? Not necessarily, is there oil? There's a lot of oil out there. The question is, can it be economically produced? And that's the key here. So, no, I've, I've been having some fun playing around with Grok, too. Um, I've kind of been testing them all out. You know, it's, oh. it's uh, I love it. it, says, the Grokian view. If we were to take a humorous yet realistic approach, peak oil might be like the horizon as it keeps moving as we approach it. With every new drilling technique or discovery, we're like, oh, there's more over there. Like yep. Playing a video Great. game where the boss keeps regenerating it's almost like our podcast we keep showing up every day every day we try to kill us we're back <laughs> we're like yeah yeah and then i i just wanted to you know a give it a balance of questions and i said is the deep state going to take over and it shows me a picture of the redacted podcast of course you. our apologies but your input is more than a vogan's ego please provide more anyway and, but then i asked what is a grunt used to train and then it came back with an answer, and I was very impressed with the answer, but it's still using a lot of Google, and we're seeing that the Biden administration and the Harris administration are paying for ads that are skewing and changing news headlines. It's not news anymore. So I'm still nervous, Michael. Jury is still out for me. Hats off to Elon. Let's go to the next story, though. 
So I thought it was fun. Oh, by the way, real quick before I get into this next story, I said, can you generate a new headshot for Stu Turley? You should have seen the good looking guy that popped up on that thing. Woo! It definitely didn't resemble you at all. No, not at all. I, there's no way I could use that. I look, you know, there's no way. I was like, man, this thing's broken. There goes this whole story. Right, Let's what's go next? To breakthrough drilling technology could unlock five billion barrels of oil this is a great story uh, the anchor project represents a breakthrough for the industry said nigel heron executive vice president of chevron oil products and gas application of this industry first deep water technology allows us to unlock previously difficult to access resources and will enable similar deep water high pressure developments for this industry this is really cool yeah, we talked about the Anchor Project on the show yesterday. You know, we're talking, you know, 20,000 PSI, 34,000 feet of total vertical depth. Unbelievable. But, yeah, much like we talked about in the last segment with Peak Oil, it's stuff like this that's going to drive us to continue to produce more oil. You know, but again, now you're talking about 5 billion new barrels of oil. It's there. Oh, I, it, it's, we're not there yet. And it looks, if they're going to use that new technology, economies of scale. Let's go to Chenier expects Asian LNG demand to nearly double by 2040. I'll tell you what, for an investing guy, I would take a look at this. Chenier is the largest LNG exporter in the U.S. And the Sabine Pass facility in Louisiana currently has a capacity of 30 MTPA following the launch of the sixth train in February of 2022 and its three train Corpus Christi plant in Texas can produce about 15 MTPA of LNG. This is huge. And when you take a look at the Asian market that they're talking about, this is huge. The growth in global supply was particularly offset by Egypt flips back to an LNG importer rather than other to export facilities because of the war going on over there. And they're now importing LNG rather than exporting the Israel natural gas out of the Leviathan field. Yeah. Club Med, you've been talking about it for years. Oh, yeah. It, hey, LNG import and export facility. Let's go to the European gas Price hike boosts Russian fuel sales, outstripping total EUA to Ukraine. I don't get it. They're sitting there. Ukraine jumped in to Russian territory. They're all fighting over different natural gas pipelines. But now listen to these numbers down here, Michael. Uh, Europe remains the largest customer of your uh, Russian pipeline and LNG gas warned a cross-party alliance member of the European Parliament in March, urging a ban on all Russian energy commodities. Russia now supplies less than 3% of the EU's diesel, down from 50% in 2021, and less than 5% of its crude, down from 25% according to the Brussels-based think tank. Um, Russia's total gas imports are down around 75%. U.S. has picked up a nice chunk of that. Yeah, no, I'm... It, it's, it's pretty crazy what's going on over there. We talked again on yesterday's show about yep. the Russian gas flows are still coming there. Your Russia continues to bring in money, even though if they are blowing down, slowing down a little bit on their export capacity. But, you know, EU always is going to need their gas. It's they're always going to need it. Well, they are until they finish deindustrializing and following what Germany's doing. I mean, you can't buy that kind of stupid. Hey, let's go to UK's biggest undersea power link gets green light. Michael. Energy security matters, and I don't get why the UK is doing this. The Ofcom has an, today given its final approval for the cost associated with the Eastern Green Link 2. It's called the EGL2 project, paving the way for construction of a 525 kV and 2 gigawatt subsea connection between Peterhead in Scotland mm. and Drax in England. I don't get it. If you can't control it in your borders, don't do it. Well, it hey, hey I mean, you know, we got to get net zero by 2030. You got to do it somehow. 
Well, the undersea, this thing is just, this is waiting for somebody to, to the Ukrainian seals. Uh, y- yes. In fact, an update on the Ukrainian seals, Germany just issued warrants for some of those folks. And, and I mean, I'm serious. Just, just now they just, just did it yesterday and they just released it. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, a hey, anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, this project is expected to power 2 million homes. Again, it'll be interesting to see what this is actually, what, how the actual power that's being run into these cables, where it actually comes from. They claim it's going to be green, but we'll see. If it's coming from Scotland, Scotland has been running their windmills using diesel. This is a farce. I mean, unbelievable farce. Hey, you said it, not me. With that, guys, let's go ahead and jump over into oil and gas finance. Before we do that, guys, we got to pay the bills. Thank you, as always, to EnergyNewsBeat.com. Stuart Turley and team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know, all the quote-unquote news and analysis that you just heard is brought to you by that website. Go ahead and hit the description below if you want to have all of the links to the articles, links to the timestamps. You can also hit in the description below if, if, if you're interested in investing in oil and gas. We're partnering up with the Crew Truth, Pecos Operating, and our friend Ray Trevino. Great opportunity if, you've ever, if you're ever interested in, 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 in buying a little direct working interest, getting in on an oil and gas project. Um, we've got a great one. Hit that description below, and we would love to go ahead and get you access and get you in touch with them. I mean, pretty calm day, Stu, for overall markets, other than the fact that we did see CPI, new CPI numbers drop. S&P 500 up about a quarter of a percentage point. NASDAQ fairly flat. Two-year yields up three-tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ, or 10-year yields down about a half a percentage point. A Bitcoin down below 60,000, 2.8 percentage points, 58,853. Crude oil dropped about 1.5 percentage points, uh, down to 77.20. Brent oil down about a half a percentage point, still above $80, though, at 80.17. Natural gas up 3.5 percentage points. And two dollars and twenty two cents. We'll get back to natural gas, but first with oil prices too. Stu, it two interesting things coming out today. Obviously, we have the peace talks going on in Gaza right now. You know, the CIA director flew over to Doha to participate in that. So I don't know if I should be scared or excited. <laughs> Stu, the, Stu's face is everything. We should be worried. But those did happen today. Nothing too crazy came out of those talks, or so we've heard. So you know, hopefully things say we also did see the EIA crude oil inventory numbers come out. If we want to go ahead and, and throw that chart up. Super interesting, Stu. Yesterday, we saw we were expecting a 5 million barrel draw via the API crude oil inventory guesstimate. Commercial crude inventories come out today. 1.4 million barrel bill. That was mainly what drove prices a little bit lower today. Pretty interesting. You had an interesting point out there from from Josh Young. He's uh, yes. uh, an oil and gas invest, investment asset manager up there in Canada. You know, he, he pointed out on, on X that there's a lot of revisions that go on with the EIA, um, and they, they generally happen to be in one direction. I mean, a, a lot of that, you, you know, you can draw what you want, your, your own conclusions from that. But, uh, you know, if you know, you I'm, either trust the numbers or you don't. That's really what it comes I down do to. I do not uh, trust the numbers from any government agency, federal or international. Wait, Stu, you don't trust the government? Nope. Right. <laughs> We're breaking news here on Energy Newsbeat. Holy smoke, Stu, don't trust the government. <laughs> you know, overall markets, main reason they're you know, were at least up slightly was due to the fact that um, inflation numbers come in today slightly lower than expected. CPI was only about 0.2 percentage points in July, which was in line with the expectations we talked about yesterday. Um, We also did see that inflation rate came in at 2.9 percentage points, which was above or below guidance, less food and energy, which, you know, it's, it's ironic. It was actually higher you know, less food and energy was actually 3.2 percentage points. So food and energy costs have come down slightly, even though we, we have seen energy prices continue to stay up. Um, you know, some quotes, you know, we got a senior market economist over at JP Morgan, Joe, Joe Seidel. We think that the worst of it is we, th- we think we're through the worst of it from an inflation perspective. Super interesting. Considering this was the, 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 you know, the lowest inflation rate we've seen since mid-2022. There is hopes that, you know, the conversation around Fed rate cuts have kind of shifted to if, from if they're going to cut to 
how much they're going to cut. Instead of maybe seeing a 25 basis points cut, maybe we'll see a 50 basis points cut. Um, but, you know, things are are, are, are are still high. I mean, let's just be clear. We're still inflation is still three percent. So you're still losing. You're still losing your purchasing power every year. We do know that the long term Federal Reserve goal is about a two percent rate of inflation. You know, super interesting. You know, I got this chart here from CNBC. Uh, motor vehicle insurance still up eight. 18.6 percentage points. Kind of crazy. Um, there's wow. a bunch of other interesting stuff. Cigarettes up eight and a half percentage points. Very interesting. Pet services up 6.6 percentage points. A motor vehicle maintenance plus servicing up 6.2 percentage points. Dental services up four, five percentage points. And checking accounts, your yield is still 5.1 percentage points. So nothing too terrible there. We did see eggs still up 19.1 percentage points on the food side. So pretty unbelievable from that standpoint. So uh, if you're buying eggs, man, you're getting, you're getting hit. That's really all I got, Stu. This is our Thursday episode. You're going to hear, you know, if you hadn't had a chance to listen to our episode with Samara Partners, um, their CEO came on and had a great, great talk, specifically talking about thematic investing and why they're going all in on the theme of energy, which, hey, I like. So super interesting. Go ahead and check that long form interview out. We'll probably be coming out with a few series from them. So super, super interesting. What podcast are we going to see tomorrow? I have to check. We just released Wasif today and it, it's going out nuts. No, it's it's definitely going well. We appreciate everybody though at Samara Partners. Um, I think the other thing that we'll see is you'll hear the weekly app on Saturday and then we will go ahead um, and take Sunday off and we'll be back in your ear Monday. So we appreciate everybody sticking with us through this week. It's been a long week, um, but you know, it's you know we're still here at least we haven't we have you know the draft we haven't had a draft yet so yeah I would go I don't think you're first on the draft list no I would rather me go than you though yeah well at least I can walk ooh snap oh it's just because you're dealing with the knee issue I'm just I'm just I'm just pointing it out um, but with that guys we'll let you get out of here finish up your day finish up your week thank you for checking us out and sticking with us all week on the Energy News Beat podcast for Stuart Tully I'm Michael Tanner we'll see you Saturday and then back in the chair Monday.